Good morning, this is Kella Lynn on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start the day. A mission man is heading to federal prison after pleading guilty to arson. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the incident happened in February 2022. Tommy Vargas, also known as Tommy Spotted Eagle, went into the Sinte Gleska University building. The 33-year-old was inside for around an hour. He collected items and removed them from the building. Vargas then found a gas can and poured gas on the floor before disconnecting the surveillance system. He lit the gas and left. Vargas will spend two years behind bars, followed by three years of supervised release. He will also have to pay over $74,000 in restitution. Officials in Yankton say the cause of a fire in the central part of the city is electrical in nature. The Yankton Fire Department says it happened in the 400 block of West 15th Street just before 5 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. Firefighters arriving on scene found smoke and flames coming out of a window. The department posted these pictures of the scene to Facebook. Officials say no one was home at the time of the fire. Investigators in Pierre are looking into a crash that closed a road in the north central part of the city. It happened around 6.30 Wednesday evening on 4th Street between Governor's Drive and Wellington Drive. A dark-colored SUV hit an electric transmission tower, causing it to lean at a 45-degree angle. An ambulance was seen leaving the crash, but it's unknown if there were any injuries. A captain with Pier Police says there were no fatalities. Kelloland's Bob Mercer was able to capture this video of crews working on the tower. Several students had a scary ride Wednesday morning when their school bus rolled onto its side. The Dual County Sheriff's Office says it happened just before 8 a.m. on a gravel road around a half mile south of Highway 12. Authorities say the bus moved to the right side of the road as another vehicle went by. As the bus tried to move back to the middle of the road, it spun on the ice and rolled into the ditch. The nine kids inside were taken to a farmer's heated shop while they were waiting to be picked up. Three students were taken to Sanford Clear Lake for their injuries, while the rest went to school. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Another chilly day today, but a warm-up possibly coming, Scott? How about tomorrow? Perfect. Yes? Okay. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow we do have some warmer weather on the way. 30s, 40s, 50s in the forecast. Uh, that will happen with partly cloudy skies. In the meantime, today, yeah, remaining cold. Uh, temperatures well below average. 20s only across northeastern South Dakota. 26 in Aberdeen, 27 in Watertown. 34 today in Sioux Falls, 40 in Pier, and 44 in Rapid City. Brian will have those details on tomorrow's warm-up coming up. Thank you, Scott. The Brookings School District is now searching for a new superintendent. The school board held an executive session last night to discuss Clint Willard's resignation. The board accepted his resignation with a 5-0 vote. A release and settlement agreement will be put up for approval at the board's next meeting on Monday. The Whole Stone Farms Butcher Shop in Sioux Falls is closed until further notice. That's according to a social media post. The shop has been closed since last week. It opened in October ahead of a public vote on whether slaughterhouses would be allowed to be built inside city limits. So far, construction on the larger Whole Stone hog processing plant has not started. The name of a well-known actor, Kevin Costner, was involved in a South Dakota Supreme Court hearing yesterday. Costner had hoped to build a resort north of Deadwood, but it never came to be. Sculptures done by artist Peggy Detmers meant for the resort are involved in the legal dispute. We're not saying that the sculptures have to survive the next ice age. What we're saying is if you have an implied agreement that they permanently be there, and that's their final uh, location that you can't unilaterally move them or repudiate it without breaching it. The question in the, prior, in the prior litigation was simple. Whether Mr. Costner had satisfied his obligation under paragraph 3 of the May 2000 contract. The court in that case answered yes, it had. This court on appeal affirmed that decision. The justices will render a decision at a later date. The state's high court also heard oral arguments over a bed and breakfast owned by Darcy Bracken of Hermosa, who received unemployment benefits through the CARES Act during the pandemic. Bracken originally received $14,000, but was later told she didn't qualify for it and was ordered to pay it back. Yesterday, in front of the Supreme Court, her attorney argued that during the start of the pandemic, Bracken, who was self-employed, suffered financially. The pandemic upended the lives of countless Americans. It impacted our economy. 
And Congress enacted the CARES Act in order to throw a financial lifeline to people such as Ms. Bracken. But the Labor Department argued there was no evidence pointing to that, and it's all based on an assumption because her business never closed. We stayed open, and in a state where we advertised our tourism, I, there's a significant question as to whether or not this bed and breakfast actually was impacted to the specific degree by COVID-19. Each side was allowed 15 minutes to make their case. We will be back inside the room this morning for two more cases. You can watch them live right here on Kelloland.com. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, another below normal day temperature-wise in much of Kettle Land after some overnight snow. Primarily, the issues have been in the southwest and then also in the southeast around Yankton, Vermilion, and in northwest Iowa. So if you're in those affected areas, continue to watch for the roads. But the nice thing about March, it just doesn't take much to start melting pretty quickly. I would expect some good recovery in the west today. Plenty of 40-degree temperatures, even with Sioux Falls being in the lower to middle 30s. Any intervals of sun we get. It feels a little better. Okay, so that's where we'll settle today. Now, overnight tonight, uh, teens in the east, I think pretty common from Aberdeen to Sioux Falls. We won't be quite as cold in Chamberlain and Pier. And we're on good footing tomorrow to see these 50s showing up around winter in Chamberlain. Probably Rapid City and Pier will be close to 50, if not a little bit, ab bit above that mark. Sioux Falls, probably mid to upper 40s tomorrow. So it will be better. You will be noticing more melting going on, slushy. Yeah, plenty of mud as well in the countryside. We're all used to that now. And then on Saturday into Sunday, there'll be some uh, slipping backwards, if you will, here. We're going to see a north wind, and that right off the bat is a little harder to overcome. There's a lot of snow on the ground, as we all know, uh, across much of the region yet, especially the farther north you go. High pressure and control of the weather this afternoon, and you can see as that departs here into Friday morning, that's when we open that brief window of those warmer numbers. But it kind of tends to go the other way. Also, in response to that bigger storm that misses us, we don't have to talk about that too much. But look at Wisconsin and Iowa. There's a lot of snow there, and that's going to come with wind in those areas. And then we get this high pressure center to wrap up the weekend. And that's just another installment of Canadian air and it just doesn't really help us to warm up a lot and oh and by the way too there are some snow areas still indicated in the Black Hills in this pattern for the weekend so you'll tend to notice that a little bit more if you're in Custer Hill City uh, Hot Springs chances of off and on snow this weekend 44 today in Rapid City 36 degrees in Yankton as we finish things up your seven day forecast as we bounce back into the 40s to kick off the weekend we'll have to pull back a little bit Sunday We'll see how this up and down trend goes next week. There's probably going to be more uh, changes coming as we try to eye the days that are maybe a little bit better. But there's also some uh, pullback potential days six and seven. It's just kind of a tug of war between trying to get some spring like weather and winter trying to hold its grip here. Aberdeen is definitely cooler on average. A lot of days are stuck in the 30s even a 29 there on Monday. For Pier, we've got a shot at 50 tomorrow. We'll probably see more upper 30s this weekend. And then uh, Monday, Tuesday, 40-degree weather. So I guess for now, we'll kind of settle at that. Rapid City, too, will be back in the 40s early next week. But no spectacular warm-ups just yet. Find out more details on your weather at Kettleland.com.